Guys, welcome to another episode of The Pulse. Happy to be here talking to people who are doing things in music, entertainment, you name it. And our guest today is doing all of that. He actually has been on the scene for a minute, but is blowing up, is on his first headlining tour. October London joins us. I appreciate you taking some time out of your schedule. Anytime, anytime. Schedule's about to get crazy. So you've been, you know, in the game for a young guy. Been in the game for a minute. Yeah, I've been in the game for a little bit. Um, I started doing music about, this is the 20th year that I've actually been doing music. Uh, but uh, I didn't come onto the scene until about 2016 with, with Snoop Dogg. And uh, just been doing shows with him since. And, and now it's, I guess, it's my time to shine, you know? <laughs> 20th year doing music means that you got started when you were like a teenager. <laughs> yeah, 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 I did. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm, th- I'm 37 now, but yeah, yeah. It's always, you got the young guys with the old head energy. You're like, oh, I've been in the game for, for yeah. 20 years <laughs> <laughs> since high yeah. school. How'd you get started in this? I met Snoop Dogg through, uh, through Jazzy Faye. Uh, end of 2015, I met Jazzy Faye through a mutual friend. And uh, uh, 2016, around the beginning, right before Super Bowl, um, uh, he had Snoop call me. But uh, once I got... Once I got uh, Jazzy Faye's number, I hit him up, sent him some songs, and mm-hmm. and, uh, and uh, I ended up sending him one of my R&B songs called Colorblind. And, yeah, I didn't know that he was on his way to go link up with Snoop, and he played Colorblind for Snoop. Snoop just wanted to sign me immediately, so he called me the night before the Super Bowl and was like, hey, I got to have you out. And uh, March 16, 2016, the rest was history. Those stories are always incredible to me. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm just doing my thing. Ran into Jazzy Faye. He listened, let Snoop hear my music. Yeah, yeah. Just like that. Like that type of connection. But you you come from a musical family, right? So this this whole thing wasn't new to you. No, it wasn't new to me at all. No, no. My mom could sing. My dad plays guitar. You know, my uncles could could always sing. And, and you know, everybody kind of gathered around as far, as far as the holidays and we just all love playing music all the time. So I grew up on Teddy Pendergrass and, and Marvin Gaye, obviously, and, and uh, the Isley Brothers and all that kind of stuff. Did you know at that young age that that's what you wanted to do or just kind of came natural? No, no. As a matter of fact, I, I, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a truck driver. I, I had no musical. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. right? That, that turned <laughs> yeah. hard left in the discussion. Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah. I, always, I was infatuated. I'm still infatuated with cars, but. At a young age, I was infatuated with trucks for some some reason. So, you know, I wanted to be a truck driver, and I actually went to truck driving school. Actually, before right before I got with Jazzy Faye um, and ended up signing to Snoop, I was graduating truck driving school a couple weeks uh, after the fact. So, and I obviously I, I quit that. I was like, forget that, and I went straight to straight to Snoop. <laughs> so, so you really were not pursuing actively. I mean, you were doing music. You were clearly yeah. writing things and trying to get, trying to get in the yeah. game. But you were preparing you know, for the the real life job on the road driving truck. Yeah, yeah, I was going to be all over the road trucker, man. I was, I was, uh, I was, I wasn't at that point. You know, I, I was older, obviously. You know, we're talking about 2015. So, you know, at that point, I was just like, you know, I want to, I, I just want to do the nine to five thing. Music isn't working out for me. And I had already quit like 12 times already, but you know, this was, this was the ending for me. You know, I was like, I'll oh, forget it. I'll just do this nine to five thing, which is fine. Obviously I did it for so many years, but yeah, I guess that just wasn't in the cards. So what's that like when you're kind of pushing along with music? I mean, obviously if you're connecting with people, you're still writing, you're doing things, you were in it, but then it's kind of a big step. Before before the Jazzy Faye thing, I would you know do little club stuff like that. But to go on the road with Snoop and do fifty thousand, sixty thousand people in a stadium, that's that was the start for me. You know, backing up, you know, doing a little backup for him. But I, I never opened for Snoop. He never had me do that. He always had me come out and rock the stage with him and be on stage for a couple of songs and just completely kill it. So yeah, I've never opened up for him at all. It was just me and him side by side. So he. He let me, you know, uh, off the chain immediately. And then, you know, now headlining my own, they're like, oh, are you nervous? And I'm like, not at all. Not at all. I'm already used to it. Basically, Snoop pushed you in the water to find out if you could swim. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And and yeah. And, and he found out I could I could swim. Now, in real life, I can't. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, we'll work on that next. What does this feel like now? Because you've already done 
arenas. Like you've been in some of the largest possible audiences that somebody could, but now, you know, now you're headlining it. Now it's about you. Is it a different energy? I don't, I wouldn't say it was a, it's a different energy. I, I, I feel more like I can reach out and touch the fans a little bit more. Like being on stage with Snoop is different from now because being on stage with him, it's, it's this big crowd. There's security barriers in between. There's, you know, you can't just, you I felt connected, but not too connected with the crowd. Now with me headlining my own and them coming to see just, you know, the, you know, me, that's, that's big for me. Cause now I'm closer to the crowd. Now I'm able to meet with my fans and do the meet and greets and, and all that kind of stuff and be close to the crowd. So that's, that's, that's big for me. I like, I like having a relationship with my, with my fans besides on, on like Instagram or, or, uh, or X. It's because of them that I'm even able to go out and do this. You know, like we we sold out a lot of our a lot of our shows. I don't know exactly which ones, but I think majority majority of them are are sold out right now. But it seems like your music is the type that may even be better in that kind of intimate setting. Biggest thing I like for you know all the fans and all the listeners to know is that you know this is this is just you know, chapter one of the, of, of me putting out a certain type of music. I'm, I'm a multi-genre artist at heart. So, you know, we, we, we got the rebirth of Marvin, but then I just released my single eternity, uh, which is a very, uh, John legend, uh, Adele kind of ballad. And that's on the color purple. I just got on the color purple, yeah. uh, soundtrack. So, you know, it's, it's definitely a, a huge difference between the two. And then next is going to be pop and I'm doing EDM house music and all that kind of stuff too. So, why is the lid being taken off when you've already had this level of success with what you've already been doing? I want to say I get bored a little quick, you know, with stuff. And I, I just like to, I like to dabble in different, different genres because it keeps me, keeps me fresh, keeps me new. I like to bounce around in, in, in different genres because it makes me feel a certain way. You know, not, not all the time I want to listen to love songs and not all the time I want to listen to, you know, pop songs or I want to listen to, uh, reggae all the time i like to jump around just like going back and forth to radio stations and, and and my goal is to be able to be heard on all platforms you know on billboard i want to be on country billboard I, I, and i did release a country <laughs> song i ain't george foreman or ali but i've won a few you know i'm a truck driving holly riding son of a gun loud country music bumping coming have you some fun I released a country song on uh, on Day Shift on on the Jamie Foxx film with with Snoop Dogg, and I released a country song called Well, I don't give a D. Uh, uh, so so I released that as well, and that was one of the biggest songs on the soundtrack, and nobody knew that that was me because it doesn't even sound like me. Next, what it's really like being signed to Snoop Dogg's recording label. That, those have to be some interesting discussions you guys have. It is, it is, man. Me and him have a have a uh, incredible dynamic. Uh, our best conversations are are pretty much between the hours of like midnight to to five a.m. If I knew, you know, you've done yeah. theme songs for you know Snoop and Martha Stewart. You've, yeah. You're on the color purple. You've already had number ones in adult R and B. You know, as you're you're young in doing it, country. You know, EDM. How do you even define yourself? Just different, different from all the other artists. Because there, there are a lot of artists that want to be just like all the other artists consistently, always, always. They're, they're having a hard time finding their way. You know, they're like, yeah. You know, even when like the Migos group came out, I was like, you know, maybe I should do that. Because at that point, I was like, I was just trying to. I was just trying to get on, man. I was trying to, I was trying to be the next thing out. And I was like, well, I need to go this, I need to go this route. I need to follow this route. And Snoop was like, nah, man, just let's, let's do this. Cause Rebirth of Marvin wasn't even supposed to come out. I was just doing it to be doing it. I freestyled that whole album. That album was done in a week and I just put it away in my hard drive. And Snoop was like, oh no, 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 no. We gotta, we gotta take that out. We gotta, we gotta let the, let the people hear that. So Rebirth of Marvin wasn't even supposed to come out. It was just an experiment. So that's a true story that you all were just, yeah in the studio, music is playing, mm -hmm. and you just kind of knocked out an album, <laughs> say, go ahead, put that one with the rest, and it ends yeah. up being this level of success. Yeah, Back to Your Place was, was done just off the top, and it was done probably in about an hour. But I was like, ah, I don't know if I want to do old school. Uh, you know, nobody's doing that right now. I was fighting Snoop on, on Drop and Rebirth. I was like, they don't want to hear this, and look at it now, you know, it took off. 
<laughs> I think I'd love to be a fly on the wall of that conversation because <laughs> you're, you're talking to a dude who does sports commentary. He's on the Animal Planet. He got a cooking yeah. show, hip hop <laughs> albums, whatever, and was probably high. So then yeah. you're sitting there trying to have the discussion about how do we go ahead and get focused. That, those have to be some interesting discussions you guys have. It is. It is, man. Me and him have an have a, uh, incredible dynamic. Uh, our best conversations are, are pretty much between the hours of like midnight to, to 5 a.m. Like he, he barely sleeps. You know, he's always working. So, you know, during the daytime, we kind of see each other in the studio walking past. And it's just like, hey, what's up, man? Hey, are you working? So, yeah, I'm working. That's all of it. But then midnight, one o'clock comes around and we're just vibing. We're listening to music consistently, all the old school stuff, just trying to figure out what the next step is. Uh, the next album's already done and I'm going completely just straight funk with it. Now I'm going like up, up tempo, Studio 54, Rick James. It's going to be, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. We're talking before mm -hmm. you came on about whether that level of talent and smooth voice and people sitting there going, is that, is that Marvin Gaye? You know, mm -hmm. Did I not hear that one before, that version? It, I was trying to figure out if that's a blessing, you know, or can it also be a curse you know, when you are the voice that some people are associating with a legend? It, it's a blessing because people love it, but it's also a curse because now it's like, okay, uh, you know, you hear people say, you know, oh my goodness, you you know, you sound just like Marvin Gaye or all, oh, which is fine. You know, mm -hmm. I, I love Marvin Gaye, but you know, Marvin is Marvin. Those are huge, huge shoes to fill. And those are shoes I do not want to walk in whatsoever. So I, I, I don't know. It, it, I love the fact that people are enjoying it. Um, they're really enjoying the music, but I don't want them to think that I'm the next Marvin Gaye. That's, that's not me. I'm a, I'm just a multi-genre artist. I'm just different. The, like I said, the next album is going to be uh, a little bit different. And uh, then the one after that is going to be, I might go, you know, mainstream pop. I might go reggae tone. You never know. It just depends on what what vibe I'm in. You do recognize though, that that it is it is unusual that any artist even has the capacity to do that. It's, it's a very cool and unique talent. It blows a lot of people away because they listen to. We'll play some of the Rebirth of Marvin tracks, or we'll play even the new tracks, and then we'll they'll, we'll play a country song. And they're like, "Oh, who is this?" And they'll start naming off country artists, and they'll just you know Snoop will be like, "Nope." That's October. And then they'll play a pop song and they'll be like, who is that? Like, that's October. And they just keep playing different genres. And now, you know, these these studios and, and these uh, labels are, are now coming to the studio to come hear it. Coming up, he's compared to Marvin Gaye and also occasionally sings country. So how does that work? That's been the biggest struggle with any any label is is is, is really honing in on, on, on one genre. But Snoop loves the fact that I do all of them. Uh, talk about how there was an industry that was always trying to paint them into a corner. Like, we want you to be <laughs> more of this, be sexier, dress a different way, sing more about sex than love, sing more about love than sex. But they always tried to make you be one thing. It doesn't sound like that's happened to you, but doesn't it also make it then harder to kind of market you when you're getting out there putting it out? Because people are like, well, well, he does everything, but so where do we put him? Before meeting Snoop, any label that I had meetings with or any, any you know, execs or, or A&Rs that, I had, that <clears throat> I've had meetings with was always like, oh, no, you need to stick to one genre and then call us. It was always that. It was stick to this, stick to this, stick to this, and that's it. But then here comes Snoop that, like you said, does Martha and Snoop. You know, he does, you know, Corona commercials. <laughs> He's doing commentating. He's doing all these things. And Snoop is just open arms to it. He's really joyful about it. He's like, oh, awesome. Oh, oh the, I'm working on this movie with Jamie Foxx called Day Shift. It's vampires. And, and you know, uh, and you know, there's this scene. And I was like, okay, I got music for it. And I sent it to him. He's like, see, that's, that's what we love. And he's not afraid of us, you know, moving to another genre after this rebirth stuff. Because what I do is um, I go on Instagram all the time and I do my lives. I go on my lives and I play all these different genres. You know, the, the more hardcore R&B, uh, the more like Tank and, and Tyrese type of R&B. And then I'll do the Eternities. And then after that, I'll switch it up and I'll do a country just to see what the fans think. And they all love it. So I've already locked in with the fans and, and they love the fact that I can bounce, bounce around. 
that's been the biggest struggle with any any label is just is is really honing in on 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 one genre but snoop loves the fact that i do all of them and i will second what he just said he's a good follow on social media folks so i encourage you to follow him scrolling through he's absolutely right you never know what you're going to hear in that moment right. so right now in the moment the tour is the rebirth of marvin so that's kind right. of what we're focusing on on tour coming to philadelphia february 19th but for our national audience he's all over the place so follow him on social media so you can see when he's coming to your city but when we come and check you out for the rebirth of marvin tour what are we going to see you're going to definitely see originality you're going to see uh uh you're going to see an artist that's been been doing it for 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 quite some time that wants to do nothing but entertain you know the 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 uh the fans uh you know, I'm an artist that just loves the fans and loves being with them. So, but you're de you're definitely going to see originality, and you're going to have a good time. I promise you that. It's possible you just break out in country during that concert <laughs> too. No, we're not. I'm not going to break out any country, or anything off off the cuff. I am though going to uh, 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 debut my uh, or oh, a couple songs off of the new album. So those I, I happen to squeeze in there. So I think two or three of them I, I squeezed in there. So. I'm I'm almost afraid to ask. Because the answer could be anything, <laughs> but is there a long list of what's next? We're talking about me doing a headline of my own shows, my own tours um, overseas, because I've toured with, with Snoop overseas, obviously, and got, got a pretty big fan base over there. So um, we're working on a couple couple shows that I'm, uh, I'm spearheading, uh, hopefully I'll be director of. Uh, I don't want to say the name of it yet, because we're, we're, still, we're still working on it. But yeah, it's a lot going on. It's a lot coming. So, you know, be, be ready. <laughs> Coming up, October London shares with us that there really is a reason that he's so diverse in his music. Remember, if you don't like these songs or, or you're like, oh, OK, they're cool. Remember, you got to you got to sing them several times and you're going to get tired of singing them if you really don't like. them. What's your advice for the next generation coming up behind you? You clearly have had a little bit of an unusual journey. So what's yeah. your advice to people who, like you, don't want to be painted into a corner? Yeah, uh, my biggest advice is just just be yourself, be you. I know that might seem a little cliche, but in the music industry, it's a fight to be yourself. It's a fight to to do the music that you want to do. Don't do the music that somebody else wants you to do. If you're not happy doing it, then you, you remember you gotta you gotta go on stage and do these shows and do these songs consistently. You know, maybe for the rest of your career. Remember, if you don't like these songs. Or, or you're like, oh, okay, they're cool. Remember, you gotta, you gotta sing them several times, and you're gonna get tired of singing them if you really don't like them. So, I just say, be you and be original, and find you a label or a a uh, a exec or somebody you can get close to that that knows you and wants wants you to be successful, and successful and be happy. Every episode of the Pulse ends with the concept of use your voice for good. We want to know how people are inspiring others. What does the phrase use your voice for good mean to you? Anything you say now is 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 tracked and logged and you know, you can put things on Twitter, you can put things on Instagram and they can screenshot it and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, just make sure that if you have if you have such a big voice on social media, um or just if you're doing music, doing shows, just know that people are listening. Use your voice for good and, and say as many positive things that you possibly can because we already have a lot of negativity going on in the world already. We don't need more. October London on The Pulse. He is on tour. Get tickets. I encourage you to get them now because, as he pointed out, depending on the city, they are selling out quickly. And you're yeah. not going to want to miss it because you have no idea <laughs> what you're going to see <laughs> in that show. You just yeah. know it's going to be good. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. <sighs> it was just refreshing talking to him. His outlook on the industry and on life, his level of success, but still enjoying himself. That was just fun, and I hope that you enjoyed it as well. Remember that there is a full podcast with some of the things that didn't make it into the show that I encourage you to check out. All places podcasts are available. And you can also see us on Fox Local. That's streaming TV, Roku, Android, Fire TV, Apple TV, you name it. All the episodes are there on demand. So check them out. I'm sure you will enjoy some of the past episodes. I leave you today as I always do, reminding you whenever you can, use your voice for good and have a good one. <laughs>